I have both census 2020. A lot of people don't know what that is, why it's important, and they are they have been pushing it off. Talk about that. Well, they're putting it off due to COVID, but we must not forget. We must get out and vote. It's a must. We have to make this change. Just like we stood up for George Floyd, we all need Absolutely. to be at the ballots the same way. We need to make change. So we need everyone to vote, and we need everyone that has not signed up for the Census 2020 to please sign up ASAP. Um, you still have time. They're still accepting. Okay. So please go to uh, mycensus2020.com, and you can register for you and your family there. Okay. So you guys heard it. I mean, that's very important because I've been hearing the commercials about it, and I, me, even me personally don't know the significance of it. But I'm definitely going to do it, and I'm definitely going out there and vote. That's just what yes. we do. And they're trying to be quiet about the um, mail-in uh, votes. You okay. should be able to do that. There, there's a specific way you can do it. You may have to register online mm -hmm. to have it mailed to you, but just look into it to make sure that your, your vote counts. Amen to that, because we definitely need people to get out there and vote. Yes. Um, so Social Good in Action does a lot of uh, things for the city. Let's talk about some of the community events that you have have done in the past and that you have coming up. Um, well, one highlight is um, we feed the homeless. We work with men, women, and children in shelters, specifically uh, Sunrise Community Church and Shelter. Um, we go under the bridges. We're, we're, we put the foot to the ground. We go under the bridges. We give purses full with sanitizer and hygiene products to the women. Wow. We stuff all the purses. Um, we give food, Walmart donates the food, and we make the sandwiches and stuff like that, ground uh, sack lunches, mm -hmm. and we take them and pass them out, and we give them as many as they want. We give them cases of water. I mean, everything that's donated to us, we give out to the people. That's a blessing. Yes. And if someone wanted to become a part of your social good in action organization, if they were a woman that wanted to stand up, um, how would they go about uh, reaching out to you, or could they, you know, are you looking for members? Well, recruiting. they can um, go to socialgoodinaction.com and click on the volunteer or member button mm -hmm. and they can register that way And because um, we always have stuff we do. Due to COVID, we've had a slow, we've been moving kind of slow, but we're kind of slowly getting back out there to be able to lend a hand to those in need. Okay. So you can, or you can call 832-468-4547 uh, and ask for me and we'll discuss the dates that we have coming up. Okay, nice, because one of those dates is Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes. So what's going on besides it being crowded in stores and yes. trying to buy your family Christmas gifts? So what's going on in Thanksgiving and Christmas? Well, Thanksgiving, every year we give out free turkeys and boxes of food to make a whole complete Thanksgiving dinner. Nice. From, from the macaroni and cheese, the green beans, the dressing, cornbread. We, we give everything, everything you need to make a full Thanksgiving dinner. We give it to the seniors and families that are in need. So people reach out to us and we have a form you fill out to get on the list and you can come to the designated area. We normally use um, the Houston Black Firefighters Association building. You drive oh, okay. Up, I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. You yeah. drive in and we just put it in your car. Really, so, you get so a full big turkey and a and a bag of food or a box of food. So do you you mentioned do they need to go on your website or do they need to like how can they if they were someone that needed help with meals or food? They can go to the website, okay, the website. and and ask or they can call me personally and I can sign them up or they can go to the social good in action page, okay, and um, inbox me. Okay, but you have to be signed up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's important. Um, for anyone listening but I'm also going to share this uh, constantly on my page as well because I'm sure especially with given the circumstances with COVID right unfortunately it's probably going to be uh, people that you know that's going to need that a whole yeah. lot I agree um, so you do food distribution but surprise home visits Yes. Yeah, that's cool. Cause I don't see that a lot no more. You know, I know. I think St. John's used to do that when I was a kid. I can't remember the details, but let's talk about that. Well, I I work for HISD in the uh, Houston Independent School okay. District. I work for Lanchard Elementary, and I work in the Deaf Education Department. So I work with deaf children and children that have hard hard of hearing. 
So I select students from each grade level. They don't know. We surprise okay. them by showing up at their home full of gifts, bikes, food, everything. Really? Cheerleaders, Santa Claus, black Santa Claus, um, just people holding props, Christmas trees, candy canes. We do the whole thing and we're cheering, singing Christmas carols and everything. How do you get, like, how does someone get lucky? Like, what can, is this like, is there a drawing? How do you find out, like, what kid needs what to get that surprise visit? Because I'm sure that's, they well, just overwhelm. Well, I kind of just, we look at the ones that may have a certain struggle or just finding it hard to deal with the year. So we kind of, you know, choose like that. But we really want to surprise all of them because just being deaf or hard of hearing is already enough within itself. So yeah. I just try to put a smile on their face. That's, I, I love to hear things like that. I know with uh, being in radio, I have gotten the opportunity to be a part of a whole lot of giveaways and things like that. And so it's always good to get back to the community yes. and, and be a humanitarian. Sometimes when they say you got to step outside of yourself you do. and put yourself in someone else's shoes because you, you just never know. So I, I appreciate that. Um, SGIA Day, yes. August 14th. Yes, August 4th. August 4th, so let's talk about that. Yes, um, well, we we do so much in the community that we were given that day um, doing the Social Good in Action Men and Women Empowerment. Mm -hmm. We have a day for that, a Martisha Haynes Day. What? It's because of everything we do in the community, I mean, people are seeing it. We don't just um, stand around taking pictures. We actually put in the footwork. That we, is we sweat. amazing. I mean, because we've had a lot of people come with us. they just there for the pictures. Try to get close to certain people. Same. But they don't want to really sweat, you know, do the footwork. So, I mean, it's, I guess it's been seen. So, I just thank God I mean, for them yeah. being able to notice what we do. That's awesome. So, August 4th. That's a social good and action day, and that's just that's for the organization. Yes, but we include everybody. Even on our day, we still give back. Mm. That's just that's. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. That's just a blessing. Cause then you got Martisha Haynes Day, July the twentieth. Yes. So, so we give it back on that day. I was day just about too. to say, what do you be doing on that day? <laughs> we all get together and give back again. <laughs> You know what? I know they love to see you come like, oh, this is my girl right here. <laughs> yes. That is, that's, that's, um, that's amazing. Because like you said, some people just want to be a part of the glitz and the glam. Right. We talk about that all the time. Right. They don't want to get out there and hustle right. and, and do the, the footwork. But God knows your spirit and your heart. So if you are that type of person, you're just trying to get some recognition then it's, you're going to know. And, and people feed off the spirit. So right. it's a blessing to see women, especially I'm, I'm big on women empowerment, doing stuff like that. And, and it's hard. Um, we, the trucks that we do, the 18-wheelers, we go home sore, oh lifting boxes, jumping on and off the 18-wheeler trucks. I mean, it's hard work. When we get a woman that comes out and she say, this is what y'all do all the time, I don't see how you do it, and we never see her again. Oh, really? Because <laughs> she thought it was going to be cute because oh. she see the pictures mm. until she saw the work. Yeah, you, you got you to gotta get out there for God's people. You know, yeah. did he complain when he was walking no. you know, in the, in the hot, on the hot ground with his no. feet and sandals, you know? Yeah. So in the you, desert. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we don't, but, yeah. And, and that's why I say you just got to take time to step outside of yourself because it's human nature for us to think about ourselves right, right and just put yourself in some someone else's shoes like you're doing so you deserve every day that they give you a then song because that's a big deal well it's it's emotional too because a lot of people you know they call and we see all these families in need i get emotional i go home crying and I, it's it's touchy yeah it's touchy because it's like the weight is on my shoulder because I'm taking in so many issues, but I feel like I have to help, you know, it's my duty to help these people that reach out. So, right. I just feel like God put me here to do this. This is my assignment. And that's what I'm Blessed going to woman. do. So, I, I see a very important name as well, but I also saw some pictures as well, so it's no secret. 
um, congressional awards with Miss Sheila Jackson. Yes. Uh, Lee, how, let's talk about that because when I saw the pictures, I, and I already knew that, you know, you were doing big things in the community, but that is like, that's a really big deal. Yes. And you were so humble, like, you know, we could talk about that, but I'm, I want to talk about that. <laughs> A lot of times I don't, I, you know, when you do stuff from the heart, you don't expect things back. You know, you, don't, you don't do stuff to, re, to get. You just do it. But, you know, other people on the outside looking, and they just want to, you know, say thank you. That's true. So. so that was one of those moments. Yeah. And how did that, what was that moment like, like being with someone that's so... Powerful and so well respected, especially in Houston. And I look up to her. <laughs> a lot. Yes, a lot of people do. I look up to her. Anytime that I've needed her, she has always been there. Wow. She has always been there. I had a student that um, said she wanted to meet Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee. And so um, she dressed up like her. Oh, and your student? Then, the student okay. at Lantra. She dressed up like her with the little wrap she wears in her oh hair. Had the same exact outfit she had on her mom dressed up. And I surprised her by bringing Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee to Lantra Elementary. And the news covered it. <laughs> she was so surprised. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Like, did she. Did the kids she just her? ran and hugged us so tight. <laughs> Oh my goodness! It was a it was a beautiful moment. It's moments like that that just give me, you know, anything. I listen to what the kids say, and if I can make it happen, I do. That's a real. <laughs> I don't know how I would have acted either. Like, wait a minute, then it's news press too. So yeah, yes. that's that's definitely God looking out. Yeah, most of our stories like that, the surprises they're caught, the news uh, covers it. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. That's so cool. I have a video of them uh, covering most of the stories and surprises. Oh my goodness, that's kudos to that kid. So hopefully, she's like she now she has that motivation because she's seen one of her favorite people. Oh, she Congresswoman has invited her to her office to come and sit at her desk. They keeping in contact. Wait a minute. <laughs> she wanted to put her in the parade and everything just like her. So she got some, some shine what? from it. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> oh my. So happy. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I didn't expect that. I was just like, oh, you know, maybe she'll have some motivation. Well, they keeping the contact and she's sitting in yes. the office. Okay. Yeah. She. I mean, because she looked just <laughs> like her. Like her, her mom made her look just like her. Wow. Yeah. And you don't just make that up. Like, you know, usually I hear, like, they had the themes in school, like, career day or be who you wanted to be, right. you know, dressed up as your favorite celebrity or whatever. But, yeah, like, that's not something that you can just make up. Right. So that's... It was the museum, <laughs> uh, and most of the people were dead. Okay. How, how they, the students dressed up. Oh. But she picked somebody that was still alive. And so she was shocked when Congresswoman rolled up on her. Oh, no. <laughs> I would have been one. Uh, am I? Do I have? You know, jeez. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a big deal. Um, Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award. Now that was a shock. Okay. I wasn't ready for that one. The Obamas. The Obamas. I got one from Donald Trump too. They don't. I was like, did you go? <laughs> Yes. I didn't see. Oh, Martisha, you win. Uh, what? He, Donald Trump wasn't there, but oh, no, no, no. It was okay. here at the ensemble. Oh, yes, yeah, it was yeah. here. Yeah. So I was shocked with them too when I was nominated to receive that award. So you were nominated. So for the Presidential Lifetime Achievement Award, the Obamas, you were nominated for something. Yes, I received that Lifetime Achievement Award. Baby. I'm so glad we captured this on <laughs> camera right now because you are so much motivation. Like I'm gonna have to this. I'll, I will continue to look back at this uh, interview because I do this from time to time on, of my favorite ones and just like, what was I supposed to get out of this? Because I know that I'm supposed to be getting something out of this. It's something because that's that's a really. I'm just honored, really. Yeah. I mean, jeez. 
uh, half of them I didn't know the humanitarian. Dang, I mean, I just it just happened. You know, they'll call me and say, "Hey, we're nominating you for this for your efforts in the community," and I'm just like, I'm just out here, just little old me, just grinding, giving back to to the people. Oh, man, that is like touching. <laughs> Oh, don't it you. really is because like I always tell people and they they laugh sometimes because I'm an artist but I've given back and it's sometimes I still feel like it's not enough and I know when God is like you need to get out there and I haven't you know and that's why I said it's like sometimes when you you uh, cross paths with people you're supposed to get something out of that right and this is like you're doing so much and like you're so humble about it like you're not even that's something, you know, I would just be like, yeah, you know, I've met uh, Sheila Jackson Lee or I've, and you just saying it just like, you, you're not trying to get anything from it. And that's just like a blessing within itself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. I, I really am. That's, that's thank you. heavy on the heart right there. Um, I don't know if I would have been able to sit down in my seat long if I would have got... <laughs> <laughs> An award from the Obamas, like they so big, like you know, people really look up to them and and and, and it's inspired. So, uh, what did you do after that? I'm just curious. Did you did you go get a drink with your husband? Like, well, I mean, we big. were all there. My mom and everybody came down for oh, a little more okay. ceremony. So we had dinner and everything there. So it was really nice, very classy. Wow, that's very nice. Um. State rep Ron Reynolds, and you might have to Ron Reynolds. Yeah, Ron Reynolds. You you might have to uh, school me on that. He's the state representative for here in Houston. Okay, Ron Reynolds, and he's I'm doing a um, we're doing a virtual meeting uh, this Saturday at three o'clock. Okay, and he's going to give us the updates on COVID and uh, the COVID testing and stuff in the community that's going on that we need to be aware about. Oh, so wow. sa this Saturday at three o'clock we'll all be virtual with um, State Representative Ron Reynolds. Okay, so that's, um, I mean, I know that's going to be important because we're all dealing with COVID together, and mm -hmm. we just mentioned this too earlier in the show, how important it is, and sometimes you don't get the memo, so you get this information firsthand, and then maybe, you know, uh, doing, you're not, do, are you doing testing um, or uh, thinking about it? The Mayor of Sunnyside, uh, Mayor Sandra Hines, okay. she's going to be uh, on with us, and she'll be giving us some insight on that as well. Nice. The, the, the testing sites. Okay, so you, you guys, you need to really go to uh, Social Good in Action website. Mm -hmm. Is Dot com. Dot com. Socialgoodinaction.com. Yes, um, and because and, this is good information to know. And if you decide that you need to talk to someone, Marticia is definitely going to be the person that you want to talk to. Like, seriously. Because I know a lot of people that still have COVID questions, and I, I can't help y'all. Like, I'm, I'm, I just say wear the mask because I don't know. You know, yeah. I'm not skilled in anything. I don't know what's going on other than that, so... Ooh. Yes, it's a lot of information that needs to be given out. So I've asked out trying for the third session. We're trying to get some doctors from the local hospitals to okay. come on and give us some more updates on the statuses in the hospitals as well. That would be great. I think um, a lot of people is concerned about that. A lot of people mm -hmm. are concerned about kids because, yeah. you know, especially with the kids not going to school right now, most of them are not. Most of them are doing virtual. So when they do return, because I think this is going to be um, temporary, right. I think in nine weeks, they're all supposed to go back. Mm -hmm. And people are scared. I mean, what um, do we do? I'm one of those people because I have underlying health issues. I, I have asthma. So I don't want to be in the building with students because they get sick a lot. I love them to death. But when they see me, they want to hug and, you know. Of course. And so they're babies. They don't understand. You know, they don't understand, like, why she don't want to be my, by me, you know, why we got to be separated. Right. You know, they're too young to understand, you know, working with pre-K and up. So, um, it, it's kind of difficult, and I just wish they think, make the right decision by not sending us back into a building with all of these students. There's no way that you can invite all these students back into a building and flood the hallways and think nobody's going to catch COVID. Even with masks. You have teenagers that play too much. 
you know, they don't wear their mask all the time. They sneeze and cough. Even even the older ones. That's, no, that's very true. Yeah. You know, the, the old ones, I'm like, you should know better. But at this time, it's so serious. We can't take that chance. I don't want to be sick because, you know, if you go in, in the hospital, you don't know if you're coming out. I mean, we have a lot of praying people, but a lot of praying people die, too. Oh, you know what? And that... That's, that was hard. So that lets you know COVID don't care your your race, color, creed, nothing. No. And for a, for a long time, it was just the silliest thing to hear people saying that the kids couldn't get it. Yeah. And then you had that one baby that was five or seven, the only child at that, and passed away. And I was just like, too, through. Just, you have to take it serious. Like, so when when they all return, I, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. Well, the... <laughs> the president that's running this country. I, I'm not going to say too much about that. I'm sure everybody already know how they feel about it. But right. If we would have would have had the right leadership, I don't think we would be where we are now. I said that earlier. <laughs> like I say, I'm a, I'm not going to say too much, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm going to keep it at that. Yeah. So I, I know exactly what you mean. And so I'm just going to go on because I, my mouth will run it over. And so let's talk about Flint, Michigan project because 100,000 cases, that's a lot of cases. So 100,000 cases do, doing what? Yes. So I help with the Flint, Michigan pro project. Okay. We tried to get um, 100,000 cases for Flint to Michigan because the water was so bad. Right. I remember that. So... We didn't end up getting 100,000 cases. We got 100,000 bottles of water. And we had the the the, <laughs> the 18 wheelers come pack it up and we shipped it to Flint, Michigan. So I led those Whoa. led those in uh, Rusk Elementary. I took the lead on that and we had people bringing pallets of water and dropping off there. So we give back whenever we can. Lot. And Haiti, we, we got donations together mm -hmm. to send to the children over there, uh, backpacks, clothes, food. So wherever we can help a part in this world, we're we going to do what we can to do to make. Hey, water? Media moves on to the next story. Kind of way, huh? So yeah. media moves on to the to next the story. They do. Hey, what people don't understand about Flint, I'm sorry to interject. No, that's go the ahead. thing that's like I'm passionate about. The water is toxic. That's right. Like, you cannot brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. You oh shouldn't take a shot. Can you imagine that? Like, no, I like didn't. When we leave here at 10, 10, 15, when we wrap up, you're going to go home. First thing you're probably going to do, take a bath for a shower. Those exactly. people can't do that. Their skin bubbles. They have yeah. the lead coming out of their skin. We, That's why it's so much water so being much. shipped. It's not right. just for cooking or cleaning. It's just for basic Baby. hygienic needs. Even brushing your teeth. You know, can you imagine you turn on the tap, you know, you put your toothbrush in, like, you know, you can't do that. You got, oh, where's my bottle of water? You do it, yeah. That's awful. And then it's to find like, out, they had water stored in a shed, untouched, just thrown. Right, after we know. collected, you know, not just our water. People I was just about to say. Yeah, but it was just thrown, trashed in a shed, not given to the people. No, wait a minute. That That's, that's, that's bothersome. Mm -hmm. That ain't right. It hurt. Why are you hiding water like that? What? Because you don't want to give it to the people. That's a whole other story. I was gonna say my, <laughs> yeah. my skin. I mean, even is how it happened right to me, you know, cutting corners on yeah. a giant infrastructure engineering project. You know, instead of doing the infrastructure the right way, which it, it would have cost us substantially more money, they wanted to make the. And I'm paraphrasing. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, they want to cut through some old mine, and people mm -hmm. forget that. Mines, really, and that's a whole other topic, but mines leave a whole bunch of soot and, mm -hmm. and stuff that's not, you know, say that's why a lot of mines are abandoned and they're closed. You can't go in because it's toxic areas. But no, they want to put these aqueducts and stuff through these mines and those are those people's water supply, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. okay. It's, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could only... That's, that's a whole you documentary, you know. Only do yeah. so much, and yeah. you did your part, and I know that's disheartening to, to see or hear that the water probably didn't even make half of them people but you made a difference and you tried so that's all that you know that matters um the humanitarian award gw wyatt 
Yes. I wasn't aware about that one either. Oh, was she, that recently or? Uh, I think not, it was last year. Okay. Yeah, last year. So you got nominated for that? Mm -hmm. I received an award for that as well. You received the, the mm -hmm. award? The I received the awards for all the, Half of them are not even on there. Like, my wall is full. I have no more space, but it's, <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that it's not important, but yeah, I, it's just like, <laughs> wow. So when you get, when you get nominated, it's like, you just like, someone calls you and say, Hey, you've been nominated for this award. And, right. Oh, that's how it really goes. Yeah. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I was just assuming like, I'm just, <laughs> I couldn't imagine. That's, that's pretty dope though. And some of them, you know, cause I was like. I've gone to so many awards, it took away from me being in the community. So some of them was like, I miss the, I got to get back out here and give to the people. I'm like spending a year going to award ceremonies. Oh my goodness. That I need, I need to get back out and give to the people. Now I couldn't make everybody's, but. That's fair, but yeah, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. Because like you said, you can't get in the streets to, you know, right. give, give back. So, nah. Um. Institute of Excellence. That's the, it's the same one. That's who. That's what they're called. Really, GWI mm -hmm. Institute of Excellence. And what about the Community Leader and Advocate Award? That's a separate one too. And it's all from the same place. Those oh. two are the same. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you sighed like, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, it's a it's a because it's a lot. Yeah. it is like. People don't know. They think it's easy. It's not. It, my house, I, it would look like a warehouse. I would have cases of water, boxes oh. of clothes, stuff I had to sort out, you know, so I can, when families call, we make what they need and go take it to them. Like, it, it was hard. Like, I was going, working a full-time job, working for the district. I've been there 15 years and doing this. And my phone stayed ringing. Oh, my God. So, it, it, it can get... You know, you can get tired sometimes. Yeah. But I just ask God to give me strength. And once COVID gave me rest, mm. it gave me time to, to get it together, to, to get my my rest that I needed and calm down and, you know, get, get ready to get back out. You know what? I can see that because as ironic as it is, with, when COVID uh, hit, I think if a lot of people are like me, I think when... When the ball is rolling, you don't stop. That's you don't right. stop. Everything is moving so fast. Right? So when COVID hit, it, it put everybody on pause. Didn't it? Like now people saying I spend more time with my family. I got to clean my house. I'm doing a garden. I mean, it just opened up so much for people to be able to do. I said the same. I saw it a week. I don't know how it's so you saw this? Yeah. And you yeah. have ten yeah. more. I found a lot of movies, you know. Like, yo, you didn't get you to relax to watch a movie. Time and, that you normally know wouldn't have. You yeah. are absolutely, I'd make websites now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was yeah, yeah, doing yeah. this before COVID. Like, you're right. Like, I don't know what it is about this year that just made people as hurtful as it, 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 it made us hurtful. see it. It made us say, just slow down. And I think even going forward, even after this, I'm going to take a day out of the week to do this and just write down a plan, right. plan, plan, because we, we were not doing that. That's right. So I'm glad you got to take a short break because you are important too. You know, it's, it, we help, you know, it's great to help people, but sometimes we forget about ourselves. And I have to remember that because if mm -hmm. I'm not good, I can't be good to nobody else. Mm. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. she's yeah. all the way that's right. The, that's the way to look I got to take care of me. You definitely got to take care of you because it's, uh, like I said, it's a lot of people that just move, move, move and help and then, but who, who do you have to turn to when you tire or when you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to make time for yourself. It's important. So I'm glad that you are able to do that right now. It, <laughs> oh my gosh. So you don't have, how many people are a part of your organization? I have 10. Okay, so members. I just wanted to make sure you had some help and some people that's... Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, it's, it's 10 of us. Okay, cool. Because I know some, you said they came and then it was like... You well, know, those were the volunteers. Oh, okay, volunteers. They wanted to come and be a part 
and they saw how hard it was. You know, it's not nothing you can just stand and look cute. Absolutely. At. You got to get your hands dirty. Okay, and might have to break a nail. Yeah. Every once in a while, but <laughs> you know what I'm some tape. Yeah, and, and keep it moving. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> one of my one of my past um, stories that I always like to tell when I get the opportunity to tell because I don't come across a lot of humanitarians. This is why this is so important to me, and I smile like this. But I used to do uh, the Star of Hope when I was a kid, okay. and um, I went to St. John's United Methodist, so they were big on that. And I went in and I did birthday parties for kids that never had birthday parties or parents were poor Aww. and I will never forget this kid y'all he came running up to me and he goes what's the day and his name was on a list <clears throat> it was only five kids and I go it's your birthday he goes so I said well no it's your birthday that's a very important day and we're throwing you a birthday party when I say this kid cried Aww. he cried so hard he said nobody ever threw me a birthday party Aww. this day is gonna be a special day I just so I remember calling my dad said, I need some money. I'm buying this kid a bike. I want to buy it. <laughs> my dad said, on my tab, I said, please, this kid never had a birthday. It just feels good yes. to do stuff like that. It, it really does. does. Like, I, will, I will never forget that story. Like, yes. So I know um, you have so many. I would like to know what's a couple of your stories that you'd like to uh, highlight that you've... I know the Flint was is a really big, but just something, someone that you touched and you just remember that you'd like to tell. When someone see this and say, you know... That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Well, my highlights are when I um, we have some some handicapped students in our school, and the family the house burned down. So the mom called and told me we went and took her food, took their family food, water, clothes, hygiene products, and the daughter was in uh, Texas Children's Hospital. So I went up there and supported the baby. And stay with her and the family. But that's like, the mom said, Angie won't wake up. She said, the medicine should be wearing off. And um, so I got close to her. I kneeled down to her in her ear. I say, hey, Angie, Miss B here. I say, I'm here with you. And she just popped her eyes open. Her mom said, oh, my gosh, I haven't been able to get her to open her eyes all day. She heard your voice, and she just opened her eyes, wow. and she started smiling. I have a picture of that. I was that was like so touching. Like it's like I'm strong, but with situations like that, I'm weak. Yeah. It's like so emotional because it's like the mom was worried that she wasn't waking up, but when she heard my voice, she woke up, and that just that always stay with me. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's a that's a great story. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it together. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's moments like this where I think it is okay to share a tear. What they say, gangsters can share a tear for what, one, two, what they can say, a minute, and then you got to go back to being gangsters. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my favorite memes. Every time I'll be like, chill up. Whew, chill up. Girl, ain't no cry now. So this is, but this is a good moment. That's yes, good. Yes, it is. So that's one. That's one. Can you give me one more? Um, I have so many. It's like the surprise home oh. visits. It's like all of those. Yeah. Moments. Like just seeing the the smiles on their faces. It's everything. It's priceless. So I I just always keep that. And yeah. I'm gonna keep continuing to do that as long as I can breathe. Amen to that. Was there anything that we missed? That's um coming up or. Like you said, um, I know you. we stress voting, how important it right. is. Can you just, because it just bothers me that, no, we can't tell people who to vote for. No, we can't. But it still bothers me that a lot of black people have decided that they're either not, not going to vote or they're still voting for Trump. <sighs> My thing is, is if you want change, then go vote. This is serious. We we must get out and vote. It's a must. Put your pride to the side, whatever your feelings are. Just get out and vote. Help make change. Absolutely, because you can't complain if you don't 
That's right. If we don't uh, be a part of making that change. So I'm just, I'm praying. I just know I'm going to go vote. And uh, I'm going to take care of the census. Because yes. I, I got to keep it real. I was one of the people that was just like, they came come to my door. And I'm like, looking at my PECO, like, <laughs> I don't I didn't know why. I just kept saying, can I do it when I get ready to? And people was just like, girl. But they have it to where you could do it online. That's, mm -hmm. what, the, that's what I was told. I said, you know what? This week. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, yeah. it, it only takes like it. five minutes, if yeah. that. Yeah. I'm going to do it because this is, again, because you said it, but I had saw, I don't know what lady comes on. Uh, she does these um, commercials on the radio, and she'll say, um, vote because President Trump is, and she has a real, like, you know, sultry, you can tell she's a black woman. Right, right. But she comes on and she was talking about the census and how important it is because they they might we met, might miss out on funding right because they don't know how many especially of us is in certain areas mm -hmm. exactly and so we we really matter we got to do that so i said this week i'm going to fill out the census online and but voting was not an option i'm going to vote like it's nothing that's going to stop me from voting exactly yeah well, going back to the census if real quick. We have quick. to be in a bubble. Yes. <laughs> I mean, going back to the census real quick. Uh -huh. You ever watch the news and they say something like, you know, uh, 300,000 people live in, you know, Fifth Ward. Oh, yeah. You know, stuff like that. Well, that's how that does. And that helps Congress determine what areas across the country get money for certain things. Okay. So, going back to one of the previous episodes, would you... Uh, living out in Katy, right? Mm -hmm. What's two things you guys got out there in Katy? Y'all got these big, huge, massive reservoirs, right? Because mm -hmm. remember, one of them almost, you know, uh, oh, breached that, during mm -hmm. Harvey. Dang gone, so uh, this politics. census, especially to you guys out there in Katy, y'all need to fill out that census. So it's like, okay, you got this many people, and Katy's been grown exponentially in the last, well, definitely since they did the last census 10 years ago, because they do it once right. every 10 years, right? <laughs> So, then give them with everything with Harvey. So, Congress will look at that and probably say, hey, okay, we need to take the strain off those two reservoirs out there in Katy and mm -hmm. build another one or do do something different. Right. You know what I mean? So, that and you get the funding for that. So, it's yeah, okay. that's super important. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to do it and not, you know, sleep on it. And uh, vote, people. Vote. It's important. Make sure you do. Yes. Um... So, was there anything um, else that you'd like to just mention, bring up, or anything like that? No, that that's it. Just to make sure you vote and complete your census. And can you let people know where to find you on social media, in case they didn't hear at the top of the hour, and um, your website again? Okay. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Social Good in Action, IG at Social Good in Action, t Twitter, Social Good in Act. And um, if you're looking for me personally, Martisha Haynes, you can reach me. And again, socialgoodinaction.com. Uh, contact number 832-468-4547. There you have it. And I will run this constantly. And whenever you have anything that's going on um, with the organization, I would like to share it. And I'll keep posted as well. Uh, to your social media so I can share because people do watch my page frequently, mm -hmm. my radio page, and they're always trying to find, like, you know, uh, either they might want to volunteer or someone that might need some assistance. Okay. Like we said, especially with COVID going on, you just don't know who's in need. Right. So, again, I just want to um, thank you for coming and interviewing and highlighting nothing like a strong, fierce black woman. Seriously. So uh, we need we need more women like you to step up to the plate, and to me that's what being uh, a female boss is. Thank you for having me. Anytime, I'll give you a green light if you want to come back. You, I know you said something. You're doing something around November and uh, December. December. So if you want to come back uh, any of those days, I don't care how long it is. Just come uh, pass. Give me some flyers. I'll pass. Whatever the case is, I just want to be. A part of it and, and help promote or anything. Okay, and then the um, social good in action, men and women empowerment. I would love for you to be a part of that. Okay, um, yeah. July 20, 2021. 
Okay, hey. So I'll, I'll give you more details. Yes. That later. Um, hey, that's how you plug in and get that working, girl. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I would definitely be honored to be a part of that. So, okay. uh, this has been a great interview. I don't think that you guys learned something from this. I know you did. And I'm smiling because I've always been told behind the scenes that was a good one. So, I know it's just a matter of time I'm going to be hit up once this post. Hey, that was good. And, and you know, hey. God works in mysterious ways, but um, definitely, definitely going to be a part of the stuff that you got going on. And once again, thank you so much. You've been listening to the Miss Blue Radio Show, and thank you guys. Make sure you tune in to the website, MissBlueRadio.com. Always, it's been nice. Thank you so much.